Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I did the initial test run of my watered air intercooler setup on my diesel swap TJ Wrangler. Quite frankly, it worked out a little bit better than I was expecting. But it's not good enough that I could say, oh yes, I could drive this without keeping a very close eye on my EGTs, which is not how I really want to drive this thing. So, I've got a couple of things I can easily change to see if I can lower my EGTs further. The one we are going to be trying today is switching out the 4x6 barrel style intercooler with a 4x10. I'm wondering if the larger volume that this intercooler provides will help reduce the EGTs further. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out how to drain this loop and then we're going to get to working on installing this intercooler where this one currently is. So I'm going to get to work. Alright everyone, I have the intercooler installed, and I just realized a massive mistake I made, and I'm not even sure why I made it anymore. I have my heat exchanger in, upside down. The drain plug is on the top, which I initially thought was a good idea, quite frankly made it easier to fill, but the more I'm thinking about it, I could just pull this hose off, hold it up high, be the highest point in the system, and fill it. So. I'm now going to spend the time to try to get the heater core out, rotate it, and reinstall it without taking the whole front grill off because I really don't want to do that again. So yeah, this is going to get interesting. That was a goof on my part. I remember when I was trying to get the heat exchanger on the radiator, I was thinking, how do I get this on here and have the drain plug at the bottom? And at the time, I just couldn't figure it out, but I was pretty tired. I've been fighting this thing for a while. But for some reason tonight, it made clear sense. Just rotate it 180 degrees, and then you have two drain plugs, one for the radiator, one for the heat exchanger, which means doing any maintenance on this in the future is gonna be very simple because I can drain both loops very quickly. So now that that's done, I'm going to start filling the system with water and we'll get it bled and we'll see how it does. I'm actually really excited. I'm, I'm kind of hoping this works. All right, everyone, it's the next morning. I didn't realize how dark it was outside last night when I went to fill it. However, this morning it is cold, so instead of trying to fill and carry really cold water, I'm just going to push the Wrangler outside, fill it that way, and then we'll go for a test drive. All right, everyone, I've got the coolant system filled up again. We're going to go for a quick test drive and see how switching to the 4x10 barrel style intercooler helps our EGTs. I also realized the other thing we can try doing is adjusting the amount of fuel. Right now, we might have too much fuel for the amount of boost that the turbo is producing. So if we give it a little bit more fuel, we actually might be able to increase our boost, which might also reduce our EGT. So I might do that as well. Here we go. Significantly better than the 4x6. You know what? 
I'm gonna clean this up out of the road real quick. Alright everyone, I've turned the fuel screw out another half turn, so we're at two and a half turns. I'm going to do a quick test to see if that has helped or hurt my EGTs. All right, everyone, I wanted to try one other thing. My baseline had been two turns out on the fuel screw. Then I went to two and a half. That made things hotter, but I saw no change in the boost. So now I just turned the fuel screw a half turn in. So now we're at one and a half turns in, and I'm gonna see what the system does. I got coolant all over it and I probably should have wiped it down and I didn't. All right, everyone, that's all I have for this video. I'm very impressed with how the bigger water to air intercooler performs. However, it's not efficient enough to drive this every day. Right now, you absolutely have to keep your eyes on an EGT gauge. And I just don't wanna drive it that way. I wanna be able to have enough headroom in the cooling capacity that I only really have to pay attention to the EGTs when I'm on a long climb. But anyway, Next time, we're going to try separating out the coolant loops and see what that does. But until then, it's YouTube. You know what to do. Tread lightly. Take out more than you bring. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.